we're going to find the critical points of this polynomial, and then I'll show you a couple more quick examples for some extra practice. Recall that a critical number of a function f is a number c at which f is defined, and where f's derivative is either zero or doesn't exist. That point c is called a critical number, and then the ordered pair whose coordinates are c, f of c, is a critical point of f. So c is just the x-coordinate, but if we get the x and the y-coordinate, that's a critical point. By definition, in order to find the critical points of this function f of x, we'll have to take its derivative and see where it doesn't exist and where it's equal to zero. We can take the derivative of this using the power rule. The derivative of 5x squared is just 10x, and the derivative of 4x is 4. This derivative is defined everywhere, so the only critical points will be where this derivative is equal to zero, since there's no place where the function is not differentiable. So we take the derivative, set it equal to zero, and solve for x. We can subtract 4 from both sides, then divide both sides by 10 and simplify, and we get negative 2 fifths as our one critical number. That's the x-coordinate, and we can plug it back into the original function to get the y-coordinate and list that one critical point. So plugging this x-coordinate into our function to find the y-coordinate of the critical point, we have f of negative 2 fifths, which by definition is 5 times negative 2 fifths squared, plus 4 times negative 2 fifths. Negative 2 fifths squared is positive 4 over 25, and 4 times negative 2 over 5 is negative 8 over 5. 5 times 4 over 25 is 20 over 25, which is just 4 fifths, or 0.8. And 8 over 5 is 1.6, so this is minus 1.6. 0.8 minus 1.6 is negative 0.8, so that's the y-coordinate. Thus, the one critical point of this function, where the derivative is equal to zero, is this point here, negative 0.4, negative 0.8. That negative 0.4, remember, is coming from that x-coordinate, negative 2 over 5. So that's all you have to do to find critical points. Find where the derivative is zero and where it doesn't exist, and then plug those x-coordinates into the original function to find the corresponding y-coordinates. Then the ordered pairs are your critical points. Here's another problem to try for practice. Find the critical points of f of y equals y minus 1 divided by y squared minus y plus 1. To do this, you'll need the quotient rule, f prime g minus g prime f all over g squared. I'll put the solution on screen now. Here's the derivative, f prime of y. We might begin by trying to find where the derivative doesn't exist. So we might ask, where is the denominator equal to zero? Well, for the denominator to equal zero, y squared minus y plus one would have to equal zero. But y squared minus y plus one is a quadratic, and its discriminant is b squared minus 4ac, which is a negative number, which means that this quadratic actually has no real roots. Hence, there's no y value that's actually going to make this zero. So the derivative is defined everywhere. Thus, the only critical points would occur where the derivative is equal to zero. For this to equal zero, the numerator has to equal zero. So we set the numerator equal to zero, and then we do some simplification and factoring and find that y equals zero and y equals two are the two critical numbers. Plugging those coordinates back into the function, we get the output values, and thus these ordered pairs are the critical points. Zero, negative one, and two, one third. Here's one more example to try with some trig functions. f of theta equals 2 cosine theta plus sine squared theta. Unlike the previous examples, this one has infinitely many critical points. I'll put the solution on screen now. Here's the derivative, f prime of theta. To take the derivative of sine squared, of course, we use the chain rule. That's where that comes from. And hopefully you know that this would exist everywhere. It's just sines and cosines. Hence, the only critical points will occur where this derivative is equal to zero. So we set it equal to zero and then factor out a sign. We can also divide everything by negative two. 
Thus, we end up with sine of theta multiplied by 1 minus cosine theta, and then we set these two factors equal to 0. We know that sine theta is 0 at all multiples of pi, hopefully you know your unit circle. And we know that 1 minus cosine theta is equal to 0 at all even multiples of pi, because it's at even multiples of pi where cosine is equal to positive 1, hence 1 minus cosine would be equal to 0. So sine theta is equal to 0 when theta is equal to pi n for any integer n. We can then plug that into our function and see how it behaves to find those y coordinates of our critical points. f of pi n, it turns out, is equal to 2 when n is even and negative 2 when n is odd. This is because the sine part of the function is just 0 at multiples of pi, and the cosine will be alternating between 1 and negative 1 depending on whether or not n is even or odd. But then we also have to consider the other critical numbers. 1 minus cosine theta is equal to 0 whenever theta is equal to 2 pi n. f of 2 pi n, it turns out, is just equal to 2 because cosine of 2 pi n for any integer n is going to be positive 1. So this would just be 2, and the sine term would just be 0. And note that 2 pi n, those are just the even multiples of pi. So we actually already captured this behavior of the function over here in the piecewise function. And so we can say that these are our critical points, 2 pi n, 2, those are all of the even multiples of pi, where the function's output is 2. And then 2 pi n plus pi minus 2, those are all of the odd multiples of pi. So if we plug in an even multiple, then we'll get 2 as the output. If we plug in an odd multiple, we'll get negative 2 as the output. And at all of these points, the derivative of the function is 0. So those are a couple of examples of finding the critical points of a function. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Calculus 1 course and Calculus 1 exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about. Stressed out, honey, I've been stressed out lately. Don't know what's what, don't know what I'm stressed about. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about.